So every time I get a new website project, I start out by building with my starter site. My starter site has the template and settings and customizations for everything that I like to use when I build a website. And one of those things is pre-built elements within Generate Press theme. Today, I wanna to show you the 10 must-have elements that I believe uh, you can't go without on every website build. All right, so here is my starter site and we'll go ahead and jump to appearance elements so we can check out the elements that I use on all my sites and have ready to go. So we'll just start at the top and go down from there. The first one is a 404 page template. Now, if you've ever seen it, the standard 404 template from Generate Press just is pretty plain Jane vanilla, right? It's not really much to it. So I always like to start out of the box with a custom 404 template. It always helps just capture the user a little bit better. Um, it keeps that page branded as well. Um, and just, it's an easy opportunity to really capitalize on that traffic if it were to happen, right? So number one is definitely having a 404 page template, but I always jump in when I create a site and edit these. But the great thing is having them in place first uh, so that I can just jump in and customize them for the website and building. Now, second on the list is uh, two different blog post templates. Now, this does bring my total to uh, 11 different elements. Um, I always just, I start out this video by saying the 10 must haves. Um, so the 11th being an extra blog post template. I don't need both of them, certainly. You really only need to use one. Um, but I just have two different variations and designs. So first is a block content template. And this is a blog post template where it pulls in the title, author name, the post date, and then the content below that. And if we jump back in here, it was blog post template number two. This again is a content template um, using blocks. And the hero section has a date, a title, with the post author, author name and the Apidar image, as well as the post content. Um, so again, by having these in place, all I have to do is jump right in, choose which one I want, customize it how I wish, and then publish it. Um, so having that foundation in place just helps speed up development processes immensely. All right, moving right along, the next on my list of must-have elements is the merged header. Um, so this is a element that allows me to merge my header content with the hero, right? So if I don't want, if we go ahead and take a look at my starter site right now, this is disabled. Um, so you can see the header and navigation is white and then the footer below that is gray. So they are not overlapping. Um, whereas if you enabled that merge and we published it and we refreshed, now you can see the content below um, is merging with the header there. So um, by default, I'd leave that off. So we can go ahead and move that back to draft. And that way, again, um, I can decide, d depending on the project at hand, whether I need that merge header or not. And more time than not, I will do it just on the home page, right? You might have a home page hero that goes, um, merged with the header only so you can come to location and set that to front page only so definitely a good one to have just in case and of course if you decide that a merge header is not necessary um, you can just come back to your element and delete the merge header right so that's the beauty of it is it just creating those uh, foundations for you and you can remove as needed okay next is a couple of elements for the off canvas mobile menu. So when I designed the off canvas mobile menu, um, took a little pointers from my buddy Kyle Van Dusen and stepped it up a notch by utilizing the elements to add certain uh, design features to make the off canvas menu a little bit more exciting. So if we come to the customizer and jump to the off canvas menu, you'll see um, there's my logo and I've got some social icons there on the bottom. So that's what these two um, elements are for. First is the mobile menu after. 
And so now if you look at this in the element settings, this is a hook and the hook name is after slide out navigation. Um, so that's what's going to put it directly in the off canvas menu right after your navigation menu. All right. And then the second one to that is the mobile menu before. Um, again, you can label these element titles, whatever you wish. Um, it's best to just name it whatever is easiest for you to identify and recognize so that you can jump back in and edit it without clicking through all your elements trying to find <laughs> the one you're looking for. So um, again, this is a hook element and the hook name is inside slide out navigation. So that one again is going to be prior to the navigation at the top in your off canvas menu. All right. <clears throat> So next is a page hero design. Now, this one is pretty vital, right? So in any website, the, anything that you can create that will help you manage it on a global basis so that you only have to change it in one place and it'll update site-wide um, is optimal. So one of those areas is page heroes. And so I have a pretty basic default page hero in place um, where it's got a gray background with the page title as h1 and you set the location here on page all pages and on the blog as well so if we go ahead and look at the element we set this element to page hero and the quick hooks that pull in is after header um, and the hook name is after header as well so what this does if we can come to a page if we come to about um, of course, it's the same exact color as our footer background, so you don't exactly see where it stops and starts. Um, we could, might be able to see on my style guide page. There it is. So there's our page hero. Um, and again, if I wanted to change the background on here, all I do is change it once, and all the pages will change it together. So definitely a crucial element to have on your starter site. All right, next up is a layout element. So this layout element kind of helps me determine a few of the settings that I like to set up on my layout page layouts. Um, so number one is the sidebar layouts. I do content, no sidebars. Um, I rarely ever use sidebars for some reason. Um, and if I do, I might just build that out uh, custom separately. Um, footer, I just leave that to fall because I always build out my footer in an element, which we'll see soon. Um, disable elements. I always disable the content title um, since we use the page hero element to dictate our content titles. Um, I do not want Generate Press pulling those in by default. So I check that box to uh, disable that content title. Um, then when we go to content area, I always do full width, no padding. Um, this just allows my content to all come to the edge here, as you can see. Um, and then display rules, I always set this to the entire site. I want these settings applied everywhere. So, of course, if there were some pages I didn't, I can always come to exclude and select those. All right, uh, the next one is another um, block content template, and this is for my policy pages. So things like a privacy policy, terms and conditions, uh, anything like that, I wanted to set up a certain layout for those pages specifically just because um, I don't want them full with the traditional layout of any other page. So um, what you'll see is a container um, with a inner container and that container itself has a max width of 800 pixels. Um, just to contain that content, it just looks a little bit better. Uh, per personal preference really. And then um, the dynamic content is based on the post content for my policies. So that pulls that in dyna dynamically as well. Um, all right, moving on to the next one, our last two. So next up is the site footer. Of course, um, easily one of the most important <laughs> elements to your website is your footer. Uh, you definitely don't wanna go without uh, a footer. So um, this is a block template and if we come to the element, you want to select the site footer um, element type. Within my site footer, I actually have three different designs built out. Um, again, this is allowing me to have a foundation to choose, like maybe one or the other is better for my client. 
uh, and the design, or maybe I just have to design, design it from scratch, which is totally okay too, but having these out of the box ready to go is perfect um, so I can really build one on the fly uh, much quicker than if I had to build these out by scratch. So um, yeah, I'd come in here, swap out logos, swap out the menu items if needed, um, phone numbers, you know, I'll call it action boxes. So, and then once I decided which one I wanted, I just go in and delete the container for the footers that I did not want to use. All righty, and now our very last element that I believe is another key element to have is a top bar. So, um, this is of course a block element and because I'm inserting a top bar or announcement bar on my website. Um, and this is going to go above your header. Um, so if you go to element type and select hook, and the hook name is before header. Um, and I designed just sort of a traditional simple top bar announcement um, with a text and a link you know just kind of some dummy content so if you come to the front end you can see at the top here the orange bar is the announcement bar and the beauty of this is if you don't need it you can always set this to a draft um, i usually leave this one in my elements whether i use it or not because it feels like more times than not clients will want a top bar or announce some kind of you know new announcement um, at some point or another so Keeping this one in my back pocket is usually pretty uh, useful. All right, guys, so that's it. That's my uh, 10 plus one must-have elements that I use on every site that are pre-baked into my starter site. I hope you find it useful and maybe uh, look to implement a few of these into your own process. Have a good one.